This video is sponsored by OWC. There are tons of productivity apps and task managers out there. And if you're looking to merge your physical to-do lists into the digital world, it might be a bit overwhelming trying to choose which one you should really try out and eventually pay the premium price tag that some of these apps offer. Well, in this video, we're going to go over what I think are some of the best apps to help you get stuff done. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. First up is AnyDo, and a lot of these apps will most likely offer a lot of the same core functionality. So it's all going to be about the design and functionality as well as some of the bonus features that you might have to end up paying extra for. With AnyDo, the design is fantastic, and so is the basic functionality of the app. All of your tasks can be organized in lists, and then once you have your list set up, you'll see those tasks organized by when they might be due. Every task you end up creating ends up in the today section by default, unless you give the task a custom due date. What I love about AnyDo is how you can create a task. When you press the button in the bottom right corner, you'll walk through a little template where you can set shortcuts for calling somebody, emailing them, making purchases, etc. Then you can add labels and assign each task to your list. You can even add reminders, subtasks, and notes, which are very common pretty much throughout all of these apps that I'm going to feature, but it's still really nice to have. If you're planning to email or call somebody, the app integrates perfectly with your contacts and making those phone calls and emails just one or two clicks away without having to go into other apps, the app just does it for you. There's even a calendar view to see where your created tasks fall into the rest of your calendar, as well as the ability to incorporate other iOS calendars into the app as well. There are tons of integrations available to you and even more features offered if you sign up for any due premium. I really do like the daily list style approach and the grocery list wizard thing that they have, which makes grocery recommendations uh, one tap away is kind of a lifesaver. Our next app is To Do, and it's also a task manager that likes to have you focus on your tasks one day at a time. The left navigation bar, when you get it all set up, is where you'll find your lists for different areas of your life. So you can have one for home, work, groceries, etc. Once you've created a few lists and a few tasks inside of those lists, you can swipe from right to left on a task to edit it, or you can swipe to the right to push it to the next day. Now I usually like to write my tasks down in a notebook and then I have everything of what I wanna do for that day and then at the end of the day, I will write for the next day things that I might not have gotten done and add them to my new task that I wanna get accomplished for the next day. So this is kind of how that app works and I kind of like that for that reason because I feel like I can just kind of put my long-term tasks in another app or on a notebook somewhere and just kind of you know, reference those when I need it. But for this day, I'm focused on these three tasks, for example, and that's what this app can do. And if you don't finish it, you just swipe to the right and it automatically moves it to tomorrow. It's definitely the least feature rich app of the five in this video. And maybe you'll like that because it kind of just cuts out all of the extra fluff that maybe you don't need and focuses your attention on the few tasks at hand for the day. Next up is Todoist. And most of you probably already know about Todoist in some way, shape or form. So I'll keep things sort of brief, but Todoist offers up a beautifully designed app across all platforms that can really help you take control of huge projects and even a lot of tasks that span across multiple people or teams. Unfortunately, a lot of the best features require the premium upgrade, but that fee can easily be overlooked for the amount of work that it's going to help you get accomplished. You can create sections and subtasks, you can organize these projects with different filters, labels, and then set due dates and priority levels too. If you use Todoist with a team, delegating tasks is really easy, and your team will receive notifications for those tasks that you give them as well as be able to make comments in those tasks. And you guys can have a little chat all inside of that one task. So everything is nice and neat and stored in that tasks for reference later. And there is a little bonus feature that might be nice if you're a visual person. And that's the ability to see the productivity graphs and achievements that are charted for you in order to see your work and goals being completed. And you can kind of just visualize all the work that you've gotten done. And it gives you a little karma score every time you complete a task. 
My only knock on the app is that you really do need to pay for premium in order to really unlock its full potential. Things 3 is another popular iOS task manager that we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on because you've probably seen it before, but it's also extremely well designed, especially with the new update that they did within the last year. And it pretty much includes everything you want in a task manager app. By now, you've probably noticed that all of these task manager apps kind of share the same design element. So there is a column view of all your projects and inboxes for your tasks. Things organizes them by inbox, today, upcoming, and someday, which I use for tasks that need to get done at some point that I'm probably not going to be referencing quite often, but I want to get them down so I don't forget to get those done in the future. Things also offer projects in areas. So this is how I used things in the past when I was a really heavy things three user. And what I would do is I would make an area, which could be work, personal or home activities, etc. whatever main section that you're going to have a lot of projects with those tasks in, that's how you want to organize it. So then the projects can be added to each corresponding area with a lot of those tasks to get those projects done inside. So I can make each video a project and add that to my Mac rumors area, for example. And then I'll add tasks like scripting, filming, editing, whatever I need to do to get that specific video done. Most of these apps featured in this video offer up versions for each of your devices like Mac OS and iPad OS. And the Mac and iPad version of Things 3 specifically is my favorite of all of the apps. It looks great across all devices and it syncs via iCloud. So everything is there, whether you're working on your iPad or your Mac or referencing it on your phone, you'll have everything in one location. Finally, our last app is not really a dedicated task manager per se. So think of this as kind of like the bonus app, but it is an incredible bonus app. And so that app is Notion. Notion lets you create pretty much anything you might need to get any kind of work or projects done. Let me show you what I mean. With my setup, I have a few different sections for different areas of my life, whether it's personal finance, my other YouTube channel, or my YouTube channel for work, which is Mac Rumors. So for work, I can write out all of my scripts for each video and organize them in one page. So everything's kind of organized by a page, but a page is extremely powerful. There are so many different templates that we'll talk about here in a second to help you kind of organize and set up your workspaces the way you might want it. So I'll have all of my scripts out for each video. I can organize them in this awesome list that even tells me how far along I am in the process of getting that video done. I can make another page for to-do lists where you can have them set up in different ways. I can either set it up with a to-do list by the week or just a standard one page checklist of all my tasks. Honestly, there's so much you can do with Notion that it might be a little overwhelming. There are also a bunch of different page templates, like I mentioned before, to maybe help you kind of kickstart the way you want to work. And the possibilities are really just endless. The best part about Notion is that it's completely free and there are apps for iOS and Mac OS, though if you want to download it for your Mac, you'll have to download it directly from their website as it's not featured in the App Store quite yet. So that's it. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite task manager or productivity apps are and what you use, and maybe we'll feature them in an upcoming video. Before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC offers a wide range of products for your Mac, like internal hard drives, SSDs, memory, Thunderbolt 3 docks, and much more. For mass storage options, this Thunder Bay 4 Mini packs a ton of storage into a desktop style device with four 2.5 inch drive bays capable of holding up to 16 terabytes of data and offers pro grade transfer speeds up to 1,556 megabits per second. There are also two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back capable of daisy chaining five additional Thunderbolt devices and it runs nearly silent, like completely silent. This thing is surprisingly very quiet. This is the perfect option for you editors out there who want to store a ton of your raw footage and files on the Thunder Bay Mini 4 and maybe edit off of an external SSD or your built-in SSD. But I do think the Thunderbolt speeds that this thing offers is honestly capable of having some videos edit off of too. I highly recommend checking it out by clicking the link in the description for more information. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.